Thank you, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank the chairman for his enthusiastic chairmanship of our meeting here tonight. I want to thank our guest speakers. We all know Charles. We know where he's come from. He don't hide anything, but he is somebody for us to be proud of. And I tell you, in regard to Captain Brian, as he said, we are cousins. And his father was a cousin of others, my, mo my mother's first cousin, and they grew up like brother and sister. They lived in the same home for many years. But he used to say, I haven't said a word. Maddie, Maddie. He used to say, I haven't said a word. And after Brian's speech, I don't know if I should say anything. I, I thought the same thing. The same thing. But Brian's speech tonight, and I know that he could have went on for an hour because he has been at work with this, finding out information, and he has it. But it was something like me walking out of court or going into court says, the truth is going to come out one of these days. And for years, the PPM and their cohorts down here have tried to blame me about safe haven. For years. Yes, we talked about it, we discussed it, we put things on paper, but when that time came that they would not agree with us about the benefits being wholly and solely for the North Sound boat operators and anybody else that of course wanted to use it, we did not sign. We did not sign. Who signed? The present administration. Mr. Ween Patton, who was chairman of the Port Authority at that time. And of course, Mr. Tibbetts and his government backed him. He could not do those sort of things. Although he was not elected, he still could not do those sort of things. And although he was chairman at that time, he could not unless his government did it. And so, tonight with Captain, you, Captain Brian divulging his knowledge, I am pleased. And we are just getting about 10 o'clock. And we intended to talk about tourism. And that's what I wanted to talk about tonight because I wanted to come from a different level with tourism. Captain Brian spoke about one aspect of it. Captain Eugene spoke. John spoke. And I guess I would have at least a half an hour. And I don't know if you have that kind of time to give me tonight. But before I go there, I do... I do want to mention that recently, in one of her meetings, the minister, Tara Rivers, made some remark about my colleague, Captain Eugene, about motions, and that he didn't bring any motions. Well, I don't know where she was. But there's always out there in La La Land somewhere about, you know. You see, I brought for many years the most motions in the house. And sometimes you bring motions and you can't get anything done. But you bring motions because sometimes you have to prove your point. But it's not true. You see, Every motion that I brought to the House, since myself and Captain Eugene been colleagues, I have discussed with him first, and my colleagues, all of them, first. And most times, 
he seconded my motions, which means he brought the motion as well. Don't tire rivers with her law degree, understand that? And of course, he supported all of them. And don't she understand that is what teamwork is all about? Captain Eugene brought motions that I seconded. I brought more than him, yes, because I've been there longer than him. But don't she understand that that is what teamwork is all about? And we supported other motions brought by other members as well. So if she said that he didn't bring any motions, well, she's not telling the truth. What she needs to explain is what has she brought for the good of this district? We are in dire need and we are run out of cemetery space, for instance in this, our main cemetery. We brought motions for that. We got land for it. We could have gotten a cemetery built. And they haven't done anything. When Tara Rivers could have held the government's foot to the fire because she was the glue that was holding the government together. Don't fool yourselves, ladies and gentlemen. These are serious times. Don't, don't you let her tell you that she's independent. She is no more independent than a three-winch cat as against a one-winch cat. And you know that all two of them has to work together. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the PPM to go. They are not for the people, and from day one, when she claimed she was an independent and joined up with that group, she let West Bay down. And she has never recovered from their grip. And now she expects you to believe, and she expects the people of West Bay South to believe that she is independent. And so she criticizes my other colleague. Ladies and gentlemen, I think he explained himself good enough. I don't need to come to any more defense tonight. But it tells you something about her thinking. Because they believe that they can say things and twist things and twist the facts and that, that's it, you're going to believe them. Well, they had their run. You believed them, and they let you down. In fact, they told you a pack of lies, and it is time that they leave. They pack their bags and leave. It is time for the PPM to go, and they can take Tara Rivers, and she's talking about she got the South locked up. Yeah, she's gone South. She is gone south. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I do want to talk to you about tourism, and I hope you give me a little bit more time. We have been around tourism a long time. I've been there, and a lot of my age group have been there. And we have seen the drastic changes over the years that we as the Cayman Islands have undergone, not only as a country, but within this vibrant industry as well. When I was a little boy, I remember the few boutique properties we had, which enabled our growth through the magic which we now term as Cayman kind. Cayman kind was what we as Caymanians in the industry projected and that built the foundations of success that followed. Defining moments over the years has created the tourism we have today. From the first Cayman Airways flight to the development of major brand hotels such as the Hyatt, 
to when I needed a game changer to continue to compete in the new Caribbean. So I thought the first luxury property here against much opposition being the Ritz Carlton. But after a lot of the movement in tourism, we must now, however, take a broader and more in-depth look at how we got here. We need to understand if we have truly been successful, how do we define success? And where do we go from here as a people in tourism? Our job as a country can be seen he ain't no Moses, as an easy task. However, in such a competitive industry, ladies and gentlemen, it is no easy task, no easy feat. That being stated, we, we do have started with what I believe, what I know to be the best product. Cayman still has a good product in our tourism. We have everything we need in order to reach certain segments of persons who want escapes from their reality wherever they are from in order to capture good memories, be safe. We still have all that. And so, yes, to, yes today we have five-star accommodations, good dining attractions, and God-given, breathtaking beaches and good experiences from good people who can take them on the water. And we must remember that it all started not with luxurious shimmering rooms, but rather with sparkling, shimmering Caymanian spas, Caymanian service, invaluable experience created by our people. And we have grown our industry. I think Brother John is still in the audience and perhaps one of the oldest ones. I think Ms. Aldine is here and uh, Ms. Clover and my cousin, Mimi, and maybe others who, Ruby, Ms. Peggy, and you yourself, but you're not that old yet. Our people have built the industry. Yes, in building that industry, we need it and will need help from others because we are inclusive. However, ladies and gentlemen, we ought now to audit, and now we see how we as Caymanians properly benefit from the economic miracle of the Cayman Islands. And this is especially true and needs to be done in short order in that industry that is near and dear to us all. Ladies and gentlemen, you hear the PPM bragging about their surpluses. Tourism is the second largest contributor to our GDP. And when you take into account all of the services that benefit from that industry, a sizable source of small Caymanian business owners are within that industry. And when you take into account cruise tourism, tourism is one of the great equalizers as person with all levels of education can become successful and can either own or rise through the ranks in its business. And if you're not that well educated, you can still have a future in tourism. And one of the areas that I've been talking about, and every time I do, the PPM likes to try to contradict me, but over the last four years, I've had that to think about, is that as we glow in the achievements of this industry, with tourism arrivals constantly increasing, those increases can be factually traced to the policies my government put into place from 20, uh, 2009 to 2012. Now, that isn't the issue in regard to the credit, who gets the credit. The issue that gets lost in these kind of great increases is the question of whether we or the government have missed the mark in regards to what truly matters. And so in, in the last few years, the only measure of success, especially for the PPM, has been in what they see as the gross domestic product numbers. What they see 
in the that ratios and, and there, you know that there have been the last couple of weeks talking about that and the surpluses. But what you must ask yourselves is what did they do to increase the revenue that gave the surplus that enabled a lower debt ratio? Did they do anything? How much revenue measures did they put in place? Don't get me wrong, ladies and gentlemen. All those are good indicators, but how do you measure the number of Caymanians a year that are losing their homes as against their surplus? What about that statistic? How do you measure success like that? How do you claim success when many of our children and elderly are going hungry? When people are still sleeping in their cars and going to the beach bathrooms to bathe and they talk about their surpluses. Well, that don't work with McKeever Bush because I know what need is. I've been there. What about the statistics of meals on wheels increasing to historic rates? How do you measure that success, Mr. Economic Ministers of the PPM? How do you claim success when we still are graduating more than half of our children without proper skills and we have set them up for failure? How do you measure success still 20% as against the 80%. How is that a success, Mr. PPM, and your progressiveness? Even worse are those young adults that we promised the world of opportunity. They have made sacrifices on their parents for higher education and return to what? Steel, wall, barriers. They can see the promised land of opportunity, however, they can't break through, can't get a job. So how do you, Mr. PPM, and your progressiveness measure that kind of success? The PPM, ladies and gentlemen, is good. They are promising young people, very promising. The PPM is really good at building monuments of nothingness. You heard me talk about the other night, about nada? Nothing. Yeah, same thing, nothing. nothing. However, it is time for us to start to build Caymanian pillars of expertise within our people and specifically our young people. There's no time to waste. There's no time to take in people who do not understand, who still talking about they can take Judah off a chicken and off a flower when that has been done from the 60s. And still talking about they're going to give a stipend or money to employers to hire Caymanians when we should be giving the stipend to the young people that want to go to our school that we built. That's what we need to do. But they found a good solid foundation, although they never said that, and although they had a governor that, well, you know when I tell you about lie, they would lie the tail off a brass monkey? Well, that governor was like that. He was just like that. So they had found the foundation because we left the money there. The seeds we planted, caught root, grew, and flourished. The issue, however, has been that the benefits have not trickled down to the right places and have not been dispersed properly to our Caymanians. Instead of them trying, ladies and gentlemen, to take some money for the development bank, they get up there and still accusing me that I've done the wrong thing in creating the development bank. Give the development bank some money so that small business can be handled and enhanced and treated with some respect and treated with some sort of assistance. My last administration did find a mess in 2009. And when we came into office, so we did the heavy lifting 
to reduce the cost that tourism was having and strategically implemented strategy that started to deliver the results that we are currently experiencing today. Moses would not tell you that. The current administration simply followed our trajectory. However, they failed to ensure proper distribution of the benefits. So we seeded, we watered, and ensured the fruits of our efforts would bloom. However, the PPM has failed to ensure that we as citizens are partaking in the benefits. What I found in 2009 was a broken tourism machine. When we started our term, remember this, in 2009, arrivals were plummeting as we came in on the heels of the PPM's reckless spending spree that gave our control for the government budget over to the United Kingdom. Don't, do you remember that? We not only had to stop the bleeding, but we had to course correct, change course, and, with, and do it with limited ability to maneuver due to needing to slash our budget as well. And we did that. We didn't throw our hands to the air, but we dug in and went to work. When we finished, we had increased tourism visitation by over 20% in my four years, over 20%. And I'm talking about overnight visit, visitation, overnight visitors. We enabled the dominoes to fall and we created a tipping point to where we are now. We toiled and got the boulder, the rock to the top of the mountain and now that's rolling full steam down the hill. And this is the point where Mr. Colonel and his government hopped on for an easy ride. The discontenting part is that the only real job they had after the results and machinery was handed to them was to ensure they got Caymanians to join in on the bus. We have to be really saddened to state that they have coasted downhill with our results and neglected the next step that was needed. Our people need to access the benefits. All of these guys tonight talked a bit about it. Some about the hotels and the, and, and the operators not getting. And some have no security, even though the property was ours. We are not accessing the benefits. They are hiding behind the results. They came and found and have done nothing to benefit of Caymanians. And so to sum it up, ladies and gentlemen, the worst global recession in history when we took over the government and tourism. That's what we found. We were left with government budget finances that were in a dire situation. And I know that they constantly want to tell you it wasn't that bad. But it was bad, real bad. We had 80 million in deficit and they said that we had a surplus. And we found nearly 750 million or 700 millions in loans and over 300 millions in building and road payments and other contracts that had to be paid. And you ask, if I had a mess on my hands, you can believe that we did. And we needed to become lean and deliver results as we had some of the worst stay over arrival figures at that point in time. Don't you forget it. And so with all of those challenges, we still increase stay over visitor arrivals by over 20% during the four years. Number one increase in the Caribbean, in fact, during that time period. And we had to make strategies and take time to build and results from those strategies are seen up to a year or more afterwards. Remember that you start something when you got to tourism, but you cannot immediately have the good effect. It will take a year or more. And so with that caveat, we, ladies and gentlemen, actually increased tourism by 
through to the end of 2014 because 2013 and 2014 was our strategy still in place. Moses Kakarnal didn't have to do anything. With our strategy, we paved the way to breaking the previous stay over visitor arrivals record in our history of 354,000 persons by achieving 382 under the same strategy. They didn't change anything. What they were doing was, was busy trying to make me look bad with the Auditor General, taking your attention away from the real facts. That's how they operate. So our Department of Tourism worked, but they work. So we allowed for the development of sports tourism. We opened new markets in South America. We had record increases in airlift with achieving services launched from five cities in three years. We reduced budget by 30%. Remember this, we had to cut the budget. I'm talking about the tourism budget. We rebranded, rebranded and encapsulated the, the, the feeling of what we now call K-Mankind to the point where to this date, K-Mankind is alive and well and resonating with our visitors whilst allowing us to, to infuse our culture back into tourism product. All of those items led us to garner top accolades such as being the number one in the Caribbean and Mexico for TripAdvisor, being 22 of the best destination in the world, the only Caribbean destination in top 25. Ladies and gentlemen, they took hard work, but they will never admit that. We wanted to ensure that we encourage young Caymanians to be interested in industry. And the goal was to train them with appropriate curriculum and to give the best work experience to allow for the best probability of success. And in order to ensure access, we strategically again made the composition of the Hospitality School Board um, to include important private sector members. But the dilemma is that as soon as we set the framework to ensure our young people benefit from the fruits of tourism, the PPM got it, got a hold of it, and have neglected that strategy and to take the baton we handed over and carry it across the finish line. Yeah, they invited Usain Bolt to the Cayman Islands, but they fell down themselves. They stalled themselves. So ladies and gentlemen, it is time, and for our party, we will get back to work and finish what was started. And we will move on and help our young people. When we return to office, I guarantee we will finish what was started in 2009 to 2012. And if they want to bring back Usain Bolt, well, we will run alongside of him too. Ladies and gentlemen, there are much to be done in regards to our tourism policy. And you haven't heard us talk about our tourism policy. That's why I'm asking you to give us some time tonight. The Cayman Islands grew to be the economic miracle and course corrects, ensuring our people have opportunity and fully participate in the increase of economic benefit is our purpose as a party. This is our measure of success versus statistics. You know what they say about statistics. So Mr. Marco can say all along, talk all day, all night about the stats. If they want to feel comfortable, well, so be it. But we need to plan, not only for next year, but if tourism is going to continue to be one of our main pillars of our economy, we must plan for five, 10 to 25 years. And once we have that understanding and move forward, we will collectively construct options to achieve those targets in the most sustainable manner possible. Yes, 
Tourist cruise tourism is important because it's where the mom and pop operations operate from. That's their business. It is important. It is not as important as the stay over visitor. But we didn't stop there, and we don't stop there. Health City is there to draw tourists. Those people coming here are counted as good tourism. They spend money. They need to spend time. They spend money. But you want to see how they plan. We put in place all the destinations that we have now. They stop Panama. Now they are talking about they are going to hire a consultant to look at the, the South America route. When we had already started Panama, and that would reach into South America, the more wealthy South American cities. But they stopped it as soon as they got in. Now they're coming back to talk about they are going to get a consultant to look at going back in like we hadn't done it before, you see. They must have thought that this election campaign was going to be a walkover for them. They didn't understand the licks they were going to take. So we, we have to look at our education for tourism and we will work with the new education ministry to ensure that tourism curriculum will be infused throughout our education system in order to ensure from a young age our children are introduced to those opportunities. And we are going to ensure specific scholarships are assigned to the Hospitality Institute that my government developed in 2012 to allow Caymanians the path to higher levels of positions within the industry. Training, we have to build on programs our administration started. And so we will continue to invest in the hospitality school to build its capabilities and student output. And we will develop a version of the hospitality school and weave it into the high school system in order to attract and train local talent from an early point. And remember this, we are only now sending between 10 to 20 percent of any graduating class to college. And until we fix that issue, we must also have other avenues for success. And so we are going to provide and include mandatory programs such as school trips from the primary school level to expose our children more than they are from a young age to the various possibilities. So ladies and gentlemen, I believe that we are on the road and can be, but not with the current administration. They will never get us on the road to where Caymanians are benefiting. If they had not shut down what we are started in South America, the same thing they say they will start, they would not have to start. The simple facts. So we are going to continue to look at South America and China. Some people say Russia. I haven't looked at that and I don't have <coughs> any knowledge base of that. But we will move our airlift we will continue to build an additional airlift from our current cap, our carriers, American Airlines, Delta Airlines, United Airlines, Southwest Airlines, JetBlue, WestJet, and Air Canada. But we will continue new airlift from Panama. This is the key to the Central and South American strategy. And we will also encourage COPA to fly to the Cayman Islands. That's what is needed, not the nonsense that Joey Hugh and uh, Moses are doing. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have our strategy. If you look into our manifesto, 
you will find those strategies and we are going to implement them. We have much work to do. What we need, ladies and gentlemen, I cannot do it by myself. I need all four of us down here. There is no time for anybody to come in here to want to learn and talk Nancy stories about Facebook. We use social media as we supposed to need uh, use it. But ladies and gentlemen, hard work is what it's going to take and good common sense. And we do have also educated people with us. I am not ashamed in any shape or form of our pla present platform here in West Bay because even with the lawyers on the other side, they have not accomplished what we have accomplished. And so, I want you and your family to remind everyone in your domain, in your neighborhood, give CDP the chance to finish the work that they started. Ladies and gentlemen, you that are from town are within hearing tonight go to Georgetown and you have Mike Adam Jonathan Piercy you have Tessa Borden you have Denston Tibbetts and you have Paulina McGaw Lumsden you give them a chance go and talk for them they know what work is they have worked in their neighborhoods they have worked for the community and we cannot do it alone down here we need all of us go Borden Town and you have Stafford Berry and you have Robert Borden but we have there are good independents that are not with us but we recognize that they are good people and we can work with them of course we will try to work with whomever is elected but you saw some of this already with this PPM. If it's not them, you're not going anywhere. So give those independents that we have said that we could work with. And so that is Kenneth Bryan and that is Austin Harris in Georgetown and Al Suku and Mr. Tony Eden in Barton Town. You, have, you will have a good government from that group. We have promised to start work on our program within 10 to 100 days. We have to put education at the top. We will have to start that. And my next meeting, I'm going to talk about it and explain a little bit where we're going. But there needs to be a work. Tara Rivers only knew about glossy paper. That's all. And as I said, she can chat, chat. But the results have not been good for us. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have to be able to move the economy so that we maintain good surpluses so that we can build roads, so that we can build facilities that we need, so that we can give the senior citizens, the seamen, the seamen of this country, and handicapped persons, and whatever veterans are left, a thousand dollars a month, they deserve it, we must give it to them. And ladies and gentlemen, we must look and revamp pensions because they, we have lost too much. And ladies and gentlemen, Tara Rivers can holler, squeal, whatever she wants to do. But the people that we, has to go back home, their money is theirs. We are not thieves and we're going to give it back to them. There are many areas 
we have to move immediately on housing so that the low income can get a house and so those that are losing can get them back or keep their house and government is going to have to put up some money to do that and then we are going to have to work with the banks to restructure what the restructure of whatever mortgages that they have but you can believe they are going to understand that they must not may must do something about this situation so God's willing on May the 24th please come out and give us your support wherever you are voting don't let them frighten you with how they have cut up this community one piece here, one piece over there. Still go and vote straight. Straight for the CDP. What in the west or the north, you vote Bernie Bush. In central West Bay, you vote Captain Eugene E. Banks. In West Bay South, where you make Tara Rivers keep going south, but you vote for John Jefferson Jr. And when you come to West Bay West, you give yours truly and ask. And remember what I have said that we are like the children of Israel. We are going out. We are going forward. We know the Egyptians are behind us, but we are going forward and God will make a way. God is going to part the Red Sea and the Egyptians will suffer. Good night and God bless you all.